And I'm going to close with this in, in, in uh, Mark chapter 9, no, 10, about blind Bartimaeus. Now, there are a lot of instances in the Bible uh, about God's rich in mercy. Ephesians 2 talks about he is rich in mercy. Proverbs 3, 3 through 4, it says, Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. So you find favor and high esteem in the sight of God. It's his mercy. Listen, you may not even comprehend what I'm saying here, but your spirit is getting it. The Bible says in Psalm 111.4, he is full of compassion. Psalm 115.5, gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. Psalm 119.64, the Lord, O earth, I mean, it says the earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. In Psalm 119.156, great are your tender mercies, O God. Psalm 1 45 8 the lord is gracious and full of mercy and compassion and it goes on and on and on and and you know psalm 103 oh bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name who heals all of our diseases and forgives our iniquities his mercies encircle us his mercies surround us and when you look up that word mercy there it means the womb it's the El Shaddai of God the mothering side of God the nurturing one who is there not only to, uh, to correct us and discipline us but love on us but to nurture us and to love on us and to fill us and to satisfy us with good things that's his desire for us so so in the um, Mark chapter 10, where am I? In the, with Deuteronomy, I mean, uh, with blind Bartimaeus. In verse 46, it says, Now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great multitude with blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. Now we know Jericho represents circumcision. So there's that sanctification. The word came forth about us sanctifying our hearts. Uh, uh, just Lord, wherever I just am not seeing it, Lord, show me. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your rich mercy in my life. Thank you for your mercy and your desire to put your arms round about us and push us all forward. See, he's not, you know, sometimes we have this mindset that God's ready to knock us all out. That's not the, listen, God is not mocked, but his mercy his mercy is new every morning. He doesn't want us to walk in this religious, self-righteous, rotten attitude that thinks, you, you know, like you, you, got, you, got, you got your intellectual thing going on. His ways and his minds are above yours or his mind. We have the mind of Christ. And, and you know what? You can give your theological dissertation, but is it setting anybody free? Jesus came to set the captives free. And he's not concerned so much about our opinion, I have to be honest with you. He wants us to yield and be surrendered to what he thinks and to what he says. Because for too long, the church at large has been in bondage and captivity. And the Lord's saying, listen, I'm giving you an opportunity. He said, here's my mercy. Here's my compassion. The blood of Jesus has come to set you free. The blood of Jesus is here to deliver you out of situations that you don't ever think you can get out of, that you don't ever think your family can come out of. You don't think financially you can come out of. He says, my ways aren't your ways and I'm asking you to get before me to fast, to hear the spirit of the Lord, and I'll give you a step by step by step by step direction. I said, Lord, I want that. Listen, he's saying to me, he goes, you got to get off your mountain of what you just know. You go through what's familiar to you. You go and do the same old, same old. He says, I'm telling you to sit before me in this hour to hear what my word and what I'm telling you and how to move forward in this season. I said, Lord, there are too many people. There are things that you want us to do. You didn't call us just to be, someone said today, just sitting on our behinds here and not doing anything. You are calling all of us to be a lighthouse. So blind Bartimaeus is in Jericho. There's circumcision of his heart. He's with his religious group. He had a beggar's license. You know, a lot of us, you know, we think we have to beg God. We don't have to beg God. It's been provided for us. But he's, he's there begging, and the religious system around him wants to keep him down. Wants to keep him on lockdown. You can't move forward. Who do you think you are? You've been this mess for so long, you're not coming out of that. And so he says, there was a great multitude, and he's begging. And it says, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, 
he began to cry out saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. That word heard, when you look it up, it means he got revelation. He perceived there's something about this man. What do I have to lose? Blindness, defeat. Jesus, have mercy on me. That's why we come to prayer. That's why we get out of our stinking, raw attitudes with this mindset that thinks you know more than Jesus. God is saying, humble yourself and act justly and call upon the mercy of God. So what did he do? He was crying out. And they're telling him to shut up. They're saying, you know, be quiet. Don't you cry out any longer. And he said, yeah. Son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I am not listening to this religious structure any longer that's telling me to sit down and shut up. I am crying out. Listen, God is undignified. He's saying, David said, I'll be even more undignified than what I've been. I am not settling down. We are not the church of the dead. We are the church of the living, resurrected God. And God is saying, where is your authority? Do you believe in whom he is? Do you believe in the greatness of our God? God, get off the mountain. We can't dwell there any longer. I am not dwelling in unbelief. I am not dwelling in defeat. I know that when I'm praying and you're, you're, you're really thinking, oh, God, I really, I'm trusting you for this breakthrough. But then it didn't happen the way you think. It ain't over until he says it's over. God wants us to birth the new. And the enemy is so intimidated by us walking in liberty, in birthing new things, in breakthrough, in deliverance for our families, in breakthrough in finances. God is saying, I want that militant people to rise up. Be like blind Bartimaeus. And I love what Jesus did. He said, and when he heard, and Jesus, he's saying, God, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy on me. Awaken me. Have mercy on me. The, you know, I call him out on your, your compassion for me to see, oh, God. And, and, you know, they were telling him to shut up. And then verse 49, so Jesus stood and commanded him to be called. And then they called the blind man, saying to him, you be of good cheer. You rise. He's calling you. You know what rise means? Awake from sleep. God is calling us to awake out of our slumber, awake out of sleep. He's saying, I am not going to go on this mountain state, dwelling on this mountain any longer. In verse 50, it says, and he threw aside his garment, and he rose and came to Jesus. And that garment represents that old beggar's cloth. I don't know about you, but I'm throwing away my garment of, of defeat, my garment of delay, my garment that's holding me back. I am not identifying. I'm not in covenant with that lie any longer. And then he was able to see. God has given us, and I'm telling you, resurrection life. He's given us access. As a man thinketh, so is he. God is opening up our mindset. He's showing us. He's saying, listen, cry out to me, and I will show you things. I will allow you to see in ways that you've never seen before. But it's a heart attitude thing. And I'm telling you, allow him to circumcise your heart. You know, and sometimes we have such resistance in our heart. Yeah, ask the Lord if you got a demon. <laughs> Listen, sometimes, you know, we have this mindset, and again, it, it keeps us on lockdown. You know, Jesus came to set the captives free. There's an energy of the Holy Spirit that he's releasing that he wants us to become one with. There's that energy. I don't, you know, there was that season. I know when I first got saved in 79, and the lady who mentored me was an ex-madam. She was an ex-madam. And listen, this lady prophesied. She cast out devils. I thought every church member did that until I went to church and backslid because I was told everything I was doing was wrong and that you can't prophesy. You're a woman. You can't do this. Well, we don't believe in deliverance. That was for then. You're a Christian. You're a new creation in Christ. Really, that's why half the church is so bound because we all want to think that there's nothing there and that we're okay when we're not. But if Jesus is providing a way of escape, why don't you take it? <laughs> Jesus says it's free. I died on the cross for freedom. 
So, you know, I know it gets people all bent out of shape and, you know, but listen, Jesus got every religious demon upset. He got every one that, was want, that wanted to stay in a mindset. He got everybody pretty upset. He got me upset. <laughs> when people used to talk to me about Jesus, I didn't want to hear about it. I said, these crazy people, leave me the heck alone. Meanwhile, I'm about to have a nervous breakdown, but leave me alone. I don't need Jesus. But see, God blind, the enemy blinds you. But is he blinding you now? We can be saved a gazillion years and just go through the motion, the motion, the motion. You're covenanting with that lie. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm cutting it off. He says, consider not the former things of old. Consider not the former things of old. Have you not known it? He says, I'm doing a new thing. It will spring forth, says the Lord. So you need to prophesy it. You need to speak it. You can say, yeah, but you don't know what I've gone through. He knows the beginning to the end. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. He knows what's happening. You prophesy. You speak to them dry, dead bones. You prophesy resurrection life to that dry situation. Listen, God knows you want to be married. God knows he wants break. you want breakthrough. You need financial breakthrough. He knows it all. Let's not limit him. We're going to break off all that limitation. Be like blind Bartimaeus. I am not keeping quiet any longer. My spirit is rising up. My spirit man is getting strong. There's an energy of Holy Spirit that he's releasing. That's got, you know, you're breaking out of a structure. You're breaking out of that Philistine antichrist structure that says no to us. That says we have to conform to all the nonsense that the government is saying about abortion and gay marriage. We, listen, we are a voice. We are a voice. Now, I don't mean demonstrating. I mean prayer power. Prayer changes things. Prayer power. When we are united and we have unity in what we're decreeing, that turns the nation. Do we need shift? Yeah. Shift happens when we pray. 